It's hard to describe vaporwave without sounding like you're kidding, so here is some vaporwave. Let us begin. If you're already familiar with Vaporwave, please forgive me for retreading old ground, especially if you think that the genre died in early 2013. At least I'm not doing a C-Punk episode. If you've heard of C-Punk before, you're already exhausted and annoyed that I'm about to talk about it again. That's me talking about C-Punk on MTV in 2012, which I think is probably an important starting point. C-Punk started as a joke on Twitter in 2011. It steamrolled from there into a Tumblr meme, a music scene, and finally found its way to mainstream culture through artists like Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, and Nicki Minaj. Thanks, Sam. C-Punk wasn't built to last, but its aesthetic fascination with 90s internet culture and graphics morphed into another Tumblr-born music scene, Vaporwave. What is so interesting about Vaporwave is its anti-capitalist political underpinnings. It's like if Rage Against the Machine was built on a foundation of elevator music instead of rap rock. First, there's the name. Vaporwave is a play on vaporware, a non-existent product used by a company to hype up its image or its value. And the aesthetic of album art and music videos tends to either mimic your old GeoCities website template or the VHS tapes that you hide in your mom's basement. Vaporwave tracks themselves detune and scramble, lounge, smooth jazz, and music, mocking the emptiness of this hyper capitalist music by recontextualizing and reimagining it. Admittedly, not everyone making Vaporwave is trying to offer a thoughtful Marxist critique of contemporary consumerist culture. Some of it is just dumb and funny. But in the way that it forces you to rethink the look and sound of a piece of everyday culture, it's not unlike YTPMVs. YouTube poop music videos are the musical cousin of YouTube poops. Hey Zelda, wake up! Huh? No, I can't go on without Zelda. I'm on a jump. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. A weird part of the YouTube ecosystem and wider remix culture for the better part of a decade, poops and poop music videos often use nostalgic snippets of audio and video just like Vaporwave. It's just a different subculture's nostalgia. And while no one has written a think piece for Slate about how YTPMVs are subverting the mainstream capitalist culture of video games, there is something subversive about using the symbols of big business for a purpose outside of their original intent, even if it's really stupid. Stupid is certainly one way to describe a lot of Vaporwave. When The Wire picked James Ferraro's Far Side Virtual as its album of the year in 2011, the magazine had to publish an explanation of their voting process just to deal with the controversy the selection had caused. But beneath Vaporwave's novelty exterior, there is both a worthwhile political agenda and a sonic foundation that's still being explored. I'd actually argue that Vaporwave is the first genre of music to so explicitly draw its influence from music with no artistic purpose. That in attempting to give meaning to soulless music, it's actually opening up new sonic possibilities that once the novelty wears off, will have an effect on mainstream music that is far bigger than C-Punk at its mainstream peak. Rihanna on Saturday Night Live. What do you think? Is Vaporwave a novelty? Worthwhile? Is it dead? Do you see the connection to YouTube poops? 
Let us know what you think in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Be excellent to each other. Our last video was all about number stations and the mysteries of the Cold War and we had a lot of great comments. We're gonna talk about a few of them. Matt99J exposed my mind to the strange mystery of the Lincolnshire poacher appearing again in 2013, this time as a phone number. So I'm including a link uh, to a Reddit thread about this in the description, uh, but basically you could call this number and it seemed to be the broadcast of the Lincolnshire poacher, or something similar to it that you would hear repeating numbers, the song, uh, and that is scary as hell. Supposedly this was all connected to MI6, but I couldn't actually find any proof connecting it to MI6. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff uh, that you can, uh, follow if you want to go down that hole. But really interesting that that is one contemporary uh, morph, one contemporary evolution of the world of number stations. GL Knight wonders if the buzzer or UVB76 was in fact just an attempt at ordering a pizza, a futile decades long attempt to order a pizza and that this was in fact a terrible way of trying to get uh, dinner, lunch, or some sort of late night treat for yourself. I think this is uh, totally possible, and I would suggest that if you were the Russian spies operating the buzzer station, you in fact try Push for Pizza. If anyone is not familiar with Push for Pizza, it's basically the yo of pizza ordering and has the best video explanation of anything I've ever seen a video explanation for. Link to that is in the description. The Ultimate Racer, congratulations on your achievement, wondered what the chances were of their comment appearing in this video, and I'd say the chances are pretty good. Congrats on being both the ultimate racer and in this video. Zdask, along with several of you, complained a bit about the title of the last video. It was something along the lines of Cold War Radio Mystery Revealed, uh, and there was some belly aching that nothing was actually revealed in the video. In my opinion, the revelation that these were most likely used uh, to communicate with spies during the Cold War that the Russian station had been abandoned and moved and that urban explorers had checked out the site and taken photos, qualified as uh, enough of a revelation to use that title. But if anyone felt misled by that, I do sincerely apologize. I think that the goal of this show is to communicate interesting ideas and explain you know, pop culture and in general sort of wider cultural phenomena. And I certainly w would be bummed out if anyone felt like I was just trying to get you to click on something upwardly style. So in the future, it will be something that I will keep in mind and hopefully we can have titles on these videos that are both exciting and make you want to click on them, but you know, don't ultimately leave any of you feeling kind of ripped off. And I think that that's a fine line that you always need to walk when you're making anything on the internet. When people complain about clickbait, it's stupid because you know what, if you spend time on something, you want people to click on it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but if someone ultimately watches one of, uh, one of my videos and then feels like, you know, they didn't get what they were promised in the title, that's a bummer. So that's something that I will keep in mind. Steve from Latvia corrected a mistake in the last video where I kept saying UV76. I was probably just thinking about UB40. I don't know. Anyways, UVB76, the buzzer. And if I misspoke, which I obviously did, I apologize. Thank you, Steve from Latvia. Alfredo Oran asks if I could also include music recommendations along with the weekly book recommendations that I've been doing at the end of the last few videos, which leads me to two questions. One, I love Goodreads. I use it to track my reading. I set a goal of reading 50 books this year. It's looking good. Uh, but I really like the sort of interactive and social element of that. And given that so many of you have suggested great books in the comments, I was thinking it might be fun to form a Goodreads group, like a shit heel reading club, where we could pick a book a month and actually all read it and talk about it there. And you know, we could mention it at the end of these videos. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Let me know in the comments if the shit heel reading club holds any value for anyone and we can figure out how that would work. The other thing is, obviously music is a big part of my life. It's a huge part of the show. If I were to set up an account on a streaming service, what is the most popular streaming service with you guys? Is it Spotify? Is it RDO? RDO is my you know, drug of choice. We just got Spotify in Canada. Is it Google Play? Do, do you use Pandora? Uh, let me know. And maybe that's something that we can also incorporate because I would love to be sort of doing a weekly music recommendation of you know new releases or whatever it is. Just steal stuff from Anthony Fantano. So let us know what you think uh, about those two different ideas and hopefully we can kind of continue this conversation uh, in a way that extends beyond just you know some YouTube comments and stuff. That would be fun. So instead of a book recommendation, tell me what you think about those ideas and we'll be back next week with fun.